Center steps off of a 10.0 meter high diving board and drops straight down into the water. If the diver comes to rest 5.0 meters below the surface of the water, determine the average resistance force exerted on the diver by the water. So, the diver starts up here 10 meters above the water, ends 5 meters below the water, still has hair. Uh, has a mass of 50 kilograms, and we're looking for the average resistance force when the diver is going through the water. What is the name of the average resistance force? Kevin, what do we call it? It will be the force of friction while the guy is going through the water. Okay. There are many ways to solve this problem. One would be to use UAM to figure out the final velocity right before the guy slams into the water. After that, you could then uh, figure out the use UAM to figure out the acceleration as the guy goes through the water. Then you could draw a free body diagram. You could sum the forces. You could solve for the force of friction. Bless you. Another way we could do it was we could use conservation of energy to figure out the final velocity right before the guy strikes the water, and then again do the same thing using UAM. We are not going to do it any one of those ways because none of those ways would involve the stuff from section 5.4. We are going to use something new from last time. We have friction, we have energy, therefore the equation we're going to use that involves friction and energy is what? Um. Well, Work of the force of friction equals the change in mechanical energy. This is the equation you're going to get on a quiz or final exam because this is the box equation. Work due to friction equals change in mechanical energy. However, Cali, it is important that you understand how to actually use this equation. So, the work due to friction, what is the equation for that? Um, the force of friction times the displacement and bless you, bless you again for a third time. And the change in mechanical energy? Um, the mechanical energy final minus the mechanical energy initial. Before we can use this equation, what do we need to do first, Jenny? <coughs> can't do that yet. Okay. These are all good ideas, but we can't do them because we have yet to do one critical thing. Uh, find a displacement? Nope, no. that's okay. That's, I got some hands up. We're going to call it. Okay. That's okay. Gross. Set the initial final force. And? No. Set a zero. Before you can use this equation, remember, you have to identify your initial and final points and the zero line. Lindsay, give me an initial and final point and a zero line. a place you could put the zero line, but I would not recommend putting it there. It simply makes it so that it's a little bit more work. What is a logical place for a zero line that actually makes it so that it's a little bit less work? Um, oh, the final position? If we put it at the final position, then the height final is zero. If we put it here, then we have gravitational potential energy initial and final. It just makes it a little bit easier. So we're going to put the, the zero line right here. All right. Starting on the far right, Emily, tell me the three types of mechanical energy that we might start with and which ones are zero and which ones are not. Um, kinetic energy, um, gravitational potential, and then... Um, gravitational potential, kinetic, and... Gravitational potential energy, kinetic energy, and elastic potential energy. Which ones are zero, which ones are not? Good, no spring. And um, the initial kinetic energy is zero because the initial velocity is zero. Initial velocity is zero, so no initial kinetic energy. What's the what's the third what's the last one that's the you said you said the elastic potential energy is zero, the kinetic energy is zero. Is it zero or not? Because? 
Why is the initial gravitational potential energy not zero? Page. Because initially there's some sort of height above the zero. Uh, the final mechanical energy, what sort of energy does our diver end with? Ryan. Um, there's no kinetic energy because it can at rest. Good. It stops. And there's no gravitational potential energy because it's at the zero line of no height. Yeah. And there's no spring, so it's not the last potential energy. Again, ends with zero mechanical energy final. On the left hand side, we're solving for the force of friction. D, we know, and we also know the cosine of the angle. So we actually have everything here. Forest, give me all the numbers. The force of friction equals, actually, let's do this first. The force of friction will solve with letters, and then, of course, I'll call on you. Negative mgh initial but divided by D cosine. Theta. Go ahead. Mass. Okay, the mass is 50 kilograms. G. 9.8. Positive. positive or negative? Positive. Are you positive? I am positive. Good. Height initial. Uh, the height initial is 10 meters. Divided by D? Is uh, 10 meters. Divide, multiply by the and cosine of? Cosine of 180. How do you know it's 180 degrees? Because <clears throat> it's a straight line. I don't know what that means. Well, when he jumps down, it's just a straight line, so that's 180. Yeah, that, that, that's, unfortunately, that, that's not good enough for me. Uh, yeah. I was just going to say that the, um, the high initial should be 15. Why is the height initial 15? Because it's, there's 5 between the water and the zero line, it's 10 between the board and the water. Height initial is the distance from the initial point to the zero line, which is going to be the 10 plus the 5, which is 15. Bob? Wow. The displacement is also 15. The displacement is also 15. Why? Because he moves 15 meters. Because he moves 15 meters. OK. Spencer? Uh, it's cosine 180 because friction always opposes motion, so it's always the opposite. The friction opposes motion, so the friction is going to be up the displacement is going to be down, therefore that is 180 degrees. Alas, there is still something wrong in our equation. Test, what is it? Should the displacement be five? Why is the displacement five meters? Because it's absolutely the force friction against the water. I agree with that, but that's, that's not quite a good enough description for me. It's close. Why, the, you're correct that the, 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 for, the displacement here should be five meters. Why is the displacement in our work equation five meters? meters. Go back. It comes from the force of friction times the displacement times the cosine of theta. Kevin? Because there's no friction within 10 meters you're falling. The friction only acts on the guy for 5 meters. For the first 10 meters, there is no friction. So the friction only acts on the guy for the last five meters. So that displacement, while the friction is acting on it, is only five meters. That is correct. Sig figs, um, was it 5.0? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so it's 1500 <laughs> newtons is the average force of friction. So to review, we could have used UAM to figure out the final velocity right before the guy slammed into the water. Then we could have used UAM to figure out his acceleration while he went through the water. Then we could have drawn a free body diagram and some of the forces itself for the force of friction. Or we could have done this. Would you agree this is a little bit easier? Right? has fewer steps. So notice, don't, don't eschew the new stuff. It's very useful. <laughs>